I haven't said anything about what information or skills uh, you should use to solve these. So that's kind of up to you. Part of what is in 5.3 maths is not just having the skills, but actually determining when you should use one technique over another, okay? Or when one will work and when another won't. So what technique will you use for the first one? Sign, sign rule, very good. We're using the sign rule because you can see the information that you've got pairs up an angle with a side and an angle with a side, right? So you have two angles, one side, and that's the leftover. So what should I write as my first line before I start actually solving the thing? Any takers? Okay, so I've got x, that's what I want to solve, right? The sine rule has this pair of fractions, right? So x over sine 61, sine 61 it's matching angle. Oh, Don't forget degrees. By the way, I'll just make a note there. I've said this a few times, uh, but I haven't really explained it very much. I've said degrees because degrees are one way to measure angles. When you progress into two unit, you will learn another substantially different way of measuring angles. So that's why you have to say 61 degrees and not just 61, because then there's 61 other things and you'll learn about them next year. All right, then you've got your other pair, right? So we've got 15 on side 33. You're gonna kick that side 61 over the other side and get the answer <laughs> out for X. Has someone already approximated to one decimal place? Say again. 24. 24.09. Oh, so zero 09, which will become to one decimal place will become one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, quick sense check. Does it look about right? Smaller angle, smaller side, bigger angle, bigger angle, bigger side. Checks out. Okay. Thumbs up. Number two. Again, I haven't told you what rule or skill you should use. Looking at the information, what does it lead you towards? We're going to use the cosine rule, right? Because I've got all three sides, okay? So I need to write out the cosine rule in its angle form, because that uh, an angle is what I want, okay? Uh, I mean, I don't have to, but it'll just be quicker for me, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm going to start with cos theta. What am I going to have on the right-hand side? Two, yeah, okay, so I've got, uh, let's, let's get another color here. I've got these two sides, which are the um, sides around the angle, and then I've got the opposite one. The opposite one's the different one, isn't it? That's the C in this scheme, okay? So there's my, I'm going to call that A, that B, and that C. All right, yeah, Aaron. So uh, what are the ambiguous cases? Okay, so the ambiguous case for sine appears when we're worrying about angles, right? Because when you do sine inverse, when you do sine inverse, of something in here, you will get two answers out, right? But you see, when I'm finding a length, a side, right? I never have to do this sine inverse business, okay? That never even appears. I just punch all of these into my calculator and out pops a single answer. And that's the only thing you need to worry about, okay? So thankfully, you don't need to consider that for this. Right, now let's come back to the cosine rule. I've got my A, B, and C, so let's fit them all in. A squared plus B squared minus C squared. Okay, that's the numerator. What's on my denominator? 2AB. Two 2AB, two very good. 2AB. Again, you get a number crunch a little bit. Um, let's get a, before you do cos inverse, can we get a decimal for this one? 9.5 squared plus blah, 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 blah. Be careful with your brackets. What are we going to get at the end here? It should be 0 point something. Yeah, good. What are my decimal places? Can I get maybe four or five? That would help. Yeah, I've got a number. You've, you've already gone to the next step? No, I've got a number. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, I don't. I'm actually like one point one something. Point. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got one minus one point one yeah. five five four six. <coughs> Rubbish. Are you sure? Yeah. Everyone? Okay, something's going wrong. Oh, hold on, wait a second. Seven plus nine point five. I think I know what I think I know what's going on. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know what's going on. Okay, let's just pause for a second. Hilarious things that happen when teachers make up questions. Okay. So remember I said I said I'm expecting a zero point something. Now can you tell me why you actually have this the same knowledge that I do that should lead you to expect a zero point something? Anyone give me a suggestion why? Very good. Okay, let me just draw this over on the side here. You, we, we drew the cos and sine and tan graphs. You remember that? Okay. So it's meant to do this. And it goes up and down and up and down. But it always stays 
between here and here. Do you remember that? Right? So the way we said that was the range of cosine and the range of sine as well, it stands between negative one and one. Okay, so that's the biggest it can possibly get, and that's the smallest it can possibly get. Now all the numbers in between here are 0 point something. Do you see that? Like maybe 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.7, etc. Okay, so therefore I should be expecting a number in here like this. Okay, it's no problem if it's a negative. That just means it's going to be, don't worry about this part. That just means it's going to be obtuse in my second quadrant. Okay, ah, but you've given me correctly because we've all got it consistently you've given me a one point something something has gone wrong okay because cosine can't do that now I wonder you have a look so I made an error and that's why you've got a number which doesn't make sense in here there's something fishy about this triangle we'll fix it in a second but we might as well just notice it before I fix it okay there's something wrong with this something drastically wrong this triangle can't exist do you remember we were talking about um, angles before and I said, you know, if you've got a right angle triangle and the other angle you find out turns out to be, uh, say, obtuse, right? That's not going to be a triangle, is it? Like if this was a, if I worked out 120 degrees here, it's not going to fit inside a triangle, right? My angle sum's too big. I have a similar problem here that I, I put in by mistake, okay? See how this side is 22? And I've got two shorter sides that are 9.5 and 11.7. What happens when you add those, 9.5 and 11.7? What do you get? I think you get 21.2 if I'm doing my mental arithmetic right, if someone can check that out for me, okay? So what that means is I've got this long side, but these two sides can't possibly be long enough to actually meet up, right? Because the two shorter sides have to be added together along with this one. So my bad, okay? Let's fix this, shall we? I think this will work if I do this. That should be okay. So let's just fix up our number there. I've fixed it up in two spots. Okay, now we should get a zero point something. Can someone give me an answer? Zero point seven nine one. Seven nine one. That'll do. Cool. Fixed. Okay, excellent. So now we've got what cos theta is, but I just want theta itself to the nearest minute. So I'm going to use cos inverse, yeah? You can go shift cos and that'll give you an answer. Okay, now what's your calculator actually telling you after you hit the degrees, minutes, seconds button, this one? <coughs> Someone already hit it? Yeah, okay. Uh, 142 degrees. 42 degrees? 140. Oh, sorry, 140, of course, yep. Uh, 20 minutes. 15.49. Okay, so over here you've got extra bits, right? And that's the degrees, minutes, that'll be seconds, okay? There are 60 seconds in a minute, so am I going to round up or down? Down. I'm going to round down because 15 is definitely in the lower half, right? So I can leave it as 20. I'm done, finished, okay? Uh, of course, if it was something else, like say maybe 31 seconds or 45 seconds or 59 seconds, they would all round up and this would become 21 minutes, but I'm done, okay?